Here I was, confronting my greatest fear. Math! Wendy, focus. What is 9 plus 11? A, 19, or B, 21? The numbers whirled around me. Panic set in. Uh, um, 9 plus 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equals 19? No, 21? Great numerical gods, why is this so confusing? You're so extra. Sit up, I'll show you again. I still don't get why I have to do this, though. It's not like I'm going to school. Yeah, I quit school not long ago to help mom out, making a couple of bucks. In case you haven't noticed, we're dirt poor. I'm Wendy, by the way. Fifteen and fabulous. Well, sorta. <laughs> I know I'm a big silly goofball, but the good thing is my brother, Leo, does not share the same brain cell with me. That guy ate knowledge for breakfast. He went to this elite high school, on scholarship of course, and always the top student three years in a row. That's like genius. Mom also said he's our only ticket out of poverty. That's why she held three jobs at once, while I gathered scrap metal to sell to the scrapyard to support his study. The three of us have been working hard to create a better life for our family. But then, one afternoon, I suddenly noticed posters of Leo that accused him of breaking his classmate's arm. What nonsense is this? I tore them all down and rushed home to see a bunch of gangsters breaking our things. My mom and Leo were in the corner, begging them to stop. Stop! What on earth are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing, brat? I'm collecting compensation for your brother's victim. He messed with the wrong person. The son of a loaded family. Y you got the wrong guy. Leo wouldn't hurt a fly. Right, Leo? I turned to him, but he just lowered his hat in guilt and defeat. How much, then? Three thousand dollars. <laughs> Three thousand? <laughs> you kidding, right? Do I look like I'm kidding? Let her go! Just stop it! All of you! Then Mom rushed to the kitchen and brought back all of our saving jars. They're about $1,000. Just take them and leave us alone. I'll pay the rest later. The thug let me go and grabbed the jars. We'll be back next month for the rest. Mom fell to her knees. She looked so hopeless amongst the mishmash. Mom, Wendy, I'm so sorry. Please let me help. The school already suspended me for a whole month. I'll, I'll get a job. I'll pay for the debt. No, my boy. Use this free time to study. Once you come back to school, I want you to be the perfect student so no one can ever look down on us again, okay? But what about the debt? Just leave it to me. I'll work some extra shifts here and there and everything will be sorted. Now go study. Th thank you. Mom, I won't let you down again. Then he left the room. That's when mom's smile wears off. I knew she only said that so Leo could have his peace of mind. The truth was, no amount of mom's extra shifts could get us 2,000 by next month. I think if the math was right, it's time for me to save the day. I tried to get a job, but somehow they all lasted for only one shift. Like when I was waiting for this diner, all the food and drink just fell out of my tray. Or that time when I work at construction site and I got my foot stuck on the thing I just built. <sighs> I came home feeling deflated. Just then, there was a knock at the door. It was Nathan, Leo's best friend. I could instantly feel my cheeks heating up. Hello, Erp to Wendy. Are you gonna let me in? Or are we gonna stand here, awkwardly? Uh, oh, uh, sure, come on in. <laughs> you look, uh, exhausted. You sure you're all right? It's just the whole thing with Leo. I've been trying to get a job to pay for the debt, but nothing worked. I'm sorry all that happened to your family, and I want to help you, but there's something you should know first. After the talk, Nathan got me a job as a maid for his cousin Zach's house. Other maids were showing me around when, Get out! A maid ran past us, crying her eyes out. What was that? That is the young master Zach throwing a tantrum. He's the illegitimate son of the light master and was only brought here five years ago by his grandfather. And let's just say, Madam Linda, his stepmom, is not so thrilled about it. They've been on each other's necks ever since. The girl you just saw was Madam Linda's favorite. She's been a thorn in Master Zack's side for a while now. Then I gotta find a way to get on both their good sides. To prove that I'm perfect for this job. Okay, first day at work. Madam Linda was complaining about Zack's toy car collection, so I threw them all away. But Zack went bonkers on me and went rummaging through the junkyard to find every single one of them. S sorry Master Zack, it's just Madam Linda- Oopsies! He immediately stormed off to confront Madam Linda. I felt bad, so to make amends between them, I cooked his favorite soup and told him that Madam Linda made it for him as an apology. But as he took the first bite, his face turned green and dashed to the nearest toilet. Whoops. One rainy day, I was taking the trash out and saw a strange woman peeking from the fence. She suddenly tripped, so I helped her up, asking if she was looking for someone, but she just ran away. Whoa, Jesus, how long have you been standing there? Long enough. Come inside, it's freezing out here. Uh, sure. 
Later that day, I was cleaning Madame Linda's room when I accidentally knocked over her jewelry box. It crashed on the floor, spilling jewelry everywhere. One of the bangles snapped in half. I frantically pocketed it to fix it later. When the gruff butler swung the door open, I apologized and promised to fix the jewelry box, but he still insisted on firing me. Just then, Zack stepped in and ordered him to let it slide. Zack then stayed and watched me fix it. Where'd you learn to do that? It's nothing. I grew up in a trailer park. Everything we own came from the junkyard. They just need a little fixer-upper. I've been doing it since forever, so... You got a gift. Besides, reusing things is... cool. <laughs> Whatever you say, pretty guy. Say, you wanna hang out sometime? Like a... date? Maybe. Won't your girlfriend get jealous? <laughs> what girlfriend? I'm very single and ready to mingle right now. <laughs> sure, why not? On the weekend, Zach took me to his favorite coffee shop, and I got to see a softer, more caring side of him. Turned out he never got a girlfriend, so I made him a flirting tutorial. For a price, of course. <laughs> At first, I thought he was just practicing on me by giving me flowers and fancy chocolates, but then he continued to woo me with my own list. He set up a romantic picnic under the stars in the backyard, took me to the park, and we watched the enchanting sunset together. That night, we walked back to the mansion. Before coming inside, Zack stopped me. These past weeks that I've known you have been the best moments of my life. Wendy, I think I've fallen for you. Will you be my girlfriend? <laughs> Where did you learn those cheesy words? Do you like them? <clears throat> is it hot in here? Or is it just you? Stop! <laughs> I just need you to promise to be on my side, no matter what. I promise. When Zack left, I returned to my room. I pulled out my diary and then ticked off the last box on my list. Well, it was fun, Zack, but everything must come to an end. Soon you'll pay for everything you did to my family. I knew the truth back when Nathan came to our house. There's something you should know first. Your brother was tricked. He didn't start the fight. A guy mocked your poor family, so Leo turned aggressive. After the incident, the guy was salty Leo beated him. So he faked a broken arm and had his family come for yours. They don't need your money. They just want you to suffer. And who's that guy? He's Zack, my cousin. What he did was wrong, so I'm on your side on this. And there's another thing. Nathan played a video of Linda and her thugs threatening my mom and demanding more money. My rage became scorching. That moment, I decided to get revenge. That's why I became a maid at Zack's house, sabotaged his relationship with Linda, and made him fall for me. Everything was going just as planned so far. But the next thing I knew, Mom called me to tell me that Leo had been expelled from school and ran away from home. My blood was boiling. That's it. Today's the day Zack goes down. I pulled out Linda's broken bangle and placed it on my bedside table. During the daily room check, the butler spotted it right away and informed Linda. She rushed over to reprimand me for stealing her jewelry. Just then, Zack swooped in to defend me. Zack, you have to trust me. I didn't steal it. I just wanted to fix it before turning it to Madame Linda. Don't worry, I believe you. You heard her. I know you despise me, but don't you dare drag my loved one into this. Oh, finally put it out in the open, huh? You and your low-life girlfriend. Birds of a feather. You're right, we're alike. And that means we're nothing like you, you evil witch. Ha! Huh, let's see how you like it. Alone on the streets? Guards, throw them out now! The next second, Zack and I were dumped on the sidewalk along with our belongings. Watching him grappling his stuff, I couldn't help but chuckle. How does it feel to be discarded like an unwanted object? Enlightening, isn't it? What are you saying? You remember Leo, the person who broke your arm? Who you used to extort money from my family? I'm his sister. I think you got it wrong. Leo didn't break my arm. He only shoved me to the ground and said something like, don't talk nonsense about his family. I didn't care, but Linda kept telling me to skip school the next day. She must have used me to make a fuss. You mocked my family for being dirt poor. That's why Leo was so mad at you. That's not true. I used to be poor too. <sighs> you remember the woman lurking around the mansion? That's my real mom. She just wanted to make sure I was okay. Turned out, Zack and his mom were abandoned by his dad because of their humble background. Then his grandpa found him. Though Zack didn't want to, his mom made him come with his grandpa so he'd have a better life. But what his mom didn't know was that heck of a mansion was the coldest, most isolated place. That is, until you came. And it hit me. Zack is telling the truth. That meant I had taken revenge on the wrong person. Shoot! I am so, so sorry. I had no idea. And now you're kicked out. Leo's gone. And there's a huge debt. I don't know what to do. Hey, hey, it's all right. One thing at a time, Kay. I'm not mad at you or anything. I just wish you'd told me. But it's fine. I don't really like that house anyway. What about your brother? He got expelled and left. I'm sure he's okay. I'll help you find him, yeah? Thank you, and I'm sorry. I don't know how to make it up to you. You don't have to. I got a feeling you didn't come up with this twisted plan. I didn't. It's actually your cousin, Nathan. I took Zack back to my place where he'd crash in the meantime. Mom was in tears. 
She told me that Leo was accused of plagiarizing an essay so he could no longer go to that school. But Leo's too smart to do such a thing. So Zach proposed we investigate at the school. To find whose essay Leo supposedly copied, we broke into the school's computer lab that night. We were snooping around when suddenly, Zach was grabbed from behind and dragged away. I slowly turned around and was shocked to the core. I sprinted to Nathan's house, banging on the door. Nathan! Zach! Zach was kidnapped! He's the heir to Adam's estate! They took him away for the ransom! The heir? What do you mean? Your grandfather's lawyer came to see Zach and I overheard him. Your grandfather's sick, so he authorized a lawyer to hand the will to his sole heir. Zach! The will? Do you know where it is? If we swap it for a fake one with someone else's name on it, they'll release Zach and target that person instead. Great idea. I think Zach left it in his bedroom. Maybe it's still there. Nathan and I hurried over to Zach's house. Nathan snuck into his bedroom while I was on the lookout at the door. Nathan switched the will for a fake one and took out a lighter and set it on fire. Just then, I turned on the light, scaring him to death. What on earth, Wendy? Kill the lights or we'll be caught. You mean, you'll be caught? Then I opened the door, revealing everyone in his family and my brother Leo. W what's going on? Enjoying the taste of your own medicine, cousin? Yeah, you just got busted. Remember when we were at the lab? I was shocked to the core to see my brother muffling Zack. Shh, be quiet or we'll get caught. Leo, I thought you left. Mom was worried sick. I know, I'm sorry, but I need to sort this out. Things have been sketchy ever since that incident with this guy. And now with this, I gotta prove my innocence. So I came here and found this. Look. Turns out, Leo's essay was identical to yours, Nathan. You took advantage of me to get revenge on Zack when he wasn't to blame. You told Leo Zack was badmouthing our family to stir things up between them. You made our lives miserable. I trusted you. I can't believe you'd go this far. You're always obsessed with Grandpa's inheritance. Everything's a competition for you to prove that you deserve to be a successor. All that work, but still nothing. Do you know how many sleepless nights I had to study? Or to hatch a plan, worrying mom and dad would blame me for not trying, for not being better? And you just showed up and everyone sees you as this golden child. And all my efforts have gone to waste. Why, Grandpa? Why not me? You were left out of the will due to your greed and scheming behavior. Now I know it's your parents' fault, and there will be severe consequences for them. And you, Nathan, you will join the army after graduation to serve the country, get disciplined, and come back a better man. Guards, take them away! As Nathan made his exit, he paused at the sight of Leo and I. I'm truly sorry. For everything! Then he walked out the door. In the end, Grandpa chose to give Zack his share of the fortune. Zack, however, refused. He never wanted the money. All he wanted was to live comfortably with his mom. So that night, he packed up his things and was ready to go back home. His true home. Seeing Zack, I realized bearing hatred towards someone cannot solve your problem. It just puts you through so much pain, and even hurt other innocent people along the way. It's best just to focus on yourself. You do you, and things will work out on their own. Like now that all mysteries are debunked, our family is free of debt, and Leo can go back to school. Full scholarship. Also, to compensate for what we've been through, Zack's grandpa decided to start a charity fund, and my family was the first to benefit from it. They even helped my mom secure a steady job. As for me, I found a knack for making things and found my place as an apprentice at a pottery studio. My co-workers have become my extended family. They always make fun of me whenever he picks me up. Hop on. We're going to a very special place today. Where to? It's a surprise. Hold tight. Hi, I'm Izzy, and my grandparents brought me up. It's not that my parents weren't around at all, it's just that they worked in New York, and, well, they were workaholics, so I ended up staying with my grandparents. My sister, Beatrice, or B as we all call her, lived with my parents. I don't know why this was exactly, it just kinda happened. My parents visited every Christmas, and occasionally during spring break, but not having them around was normal for me. Then one summer, my parents showed up with B and told me they were moving to town and we were all going to live together. At first, this was weird as I was so used to barely seeing them, but then I decided it could be good, right? But, well, living with a little sister was more complicated than I thought. It's kind of bothersome. In fact, B even pushed me, an average drama-free girl at school, into a bunch of nonsense scandals. Bee's a sweet kid, but she's on the shy side and she can be a bit clingy. Probably because she still needed some time to fit into this new place, so she followed me and clung on to me all day long. But I just didn't get why she had to copy everything I did. I wore ripped skinny jeans, so she bought the exact same pair. I wore glitter pink lip gloss, so she did too. I got a new phone for my birthday and she begged our parents until they caved and gave her one too. That kinda sucked. 
as I'd waited for ages for a decent phone, and she got one just by nagging. She had her own bedroom, but each night she came into my room and made me tell her stories about everyone at school, as she said this would help her make new friends faster. We'd chat about school, boys, friends, you know, girl stuff. Then she'd fall asleep in my room. She stayed here pretty much every night, so in the end, our parents bought us bunk beds. But she then went and bragged about everything I told her to her classmates, so they'd think she's cool, since she got to hang out with seniors and knew their stories. One time, she leaked out the secret that my best friend Lee had a crush on Paul, and she told her friends that I was surely going to be spring queen at the next prom. What? I didn't even think about trying out for that. Never! I'm not interested in that kind of attention. And obviously, the rumors got out. Lee stormed up to me, yelling and all, saying she never wanted to be friends again. I tried to explain things to her, but she didn't listen. And for the rest of the day, every time I walked across the hallway, the popular girls would smirk at me and say things like, Who do you think you are? Like, seriously, as if you could be spring queen? I hated this. I just wanted to have a normal, quiet life at school. I didn't like this attention, nor did I have any longing to be spring queen. This made me so mad. So later in the afternoon, I stormed into B's classroom during recess, dragged her aside, and told her to stop ruining my life with her big mouth. I didn't have much time to talk to her about exactly what had happened because I had to return to class, but I made sure to make my point and threw her a dirty look before I left. She looked pretty scared. I stomped back to class, but my tantrum didn't last long because during English Lit, my teacher paired me on a group project with two of my friends and Andy, the cutest guy ever. This was the perfect excuse to use the group study time to organize a meetup at my house. The plan was set. I just needed to come home, put on my cutest outfit, and wait for them to come over. I was so nervous that I didn't really mind about the feud with my sister anymore. I excitedly told her about Andy coming over, and she helped me tidy up my room and braid my hair. They arrived, and studying didn't last long. Soon, we were watching movies and playing games. Then B suggested we play Seven Minutes in Heaven. That's so childish, but the others seemed up for it. Besides, I figured it could work in my favor with Andy. We spun the bottle to decide, and when it was Andy's turn, B asked to spin it for him. Then she winked over at me and Andy. Then, to my horror, the bottle pointed at her. What was that? Is she stealing my crush too? This little brat. She and Andy went into the closet, and after seven excruciating minutes, they walked out looking all smiley. I was so mad, but I kept my cool until they left. Then I screamed at Bee that she was a horrible, sneaky girl and to stay away from me. It got so heated, Mom had to come and tell me to stop. I slammed my bedroom door shut and even put my dresser in front of it so B couldn't come in. The next day, she tried apologizing to me, but I ignored her. She even left a candy bar on my pillow, but I just chucked it in the trash. To make matters worse, Andy approached me at school and went on about the fun he'd had at mine and how cool B was. What? So what exactly did those two do in the closet? This was awful. Then prom day came. I didn't have a date, Lee still wasn't talking to me, and trying to avoid B in my own house was draining. Then. Lee called me up excitedly and told me Paul had asked her to prom. I was so happy for her, and we made up. She invited me over to get ready for prom at hers. I packed my dress, my makeup, but my eyebrow pencil was missing. I mumbled, Ugh, B, as she must have taken mine again. I knew she was at swimming practice, so I went through her drawer to find my makeup stuff. Nothing. Then I spotted something under her pillow. It looked like the end of a black pencil. This must be it. I took it out, but it wasn't an eyebrow pencil, just a normal pen. It was in the middle of a notebook. So curious. I pulled it out. That's when I glimpsed my name on the open page. So I picked it up to see what it was. It's her diary. I read through the first few pages. She said she loved me very much and that she was happy that she finally got to live in the same house as me. I found a specific page that was a little ripped. It was the day I yelled at her. I saw tears dried out on her words. She wrote how she really thought I was very beautiful and would win the Spring Queen title, and how she just wanted to help me and Andy get together, so she suggested the seven minutes game. And she tried to aim the bottle at me, but it went wrong. And that when she was in the closet with Andy, she was only saying nice things about me to him. 
And she also found out that Andy had feelings for me. Also, she wrote that sleeping alone was so scary, but she didn't want to bother me anymore. She said she'd ruined everything and wished she could move back to her old house. I felt so guilty, and I just cried all the way to Lee's place and later told her everything. I was not in the mood for prom anymore, so even though everyone complimented me on my dress, I couldn't enjoy myself. Andy came forward and asked me to dance, but I couldn't quit thinking about B. I apologized to Andy for my bad mood, and he was so understanding, we ended up taking a walk outside, and I vented to him about how I'd misunderstood my sister. Then, suddenly, I spotted her with friends at the photo booth at the entrance. They looked like they were having so much fun, except for her. She looked so sad. I grabbed her arm from behind. She turned around, shocked, then quickly stepped back and went to leave, but I stopped her and told her I was sorry. I hugged her, and we both cried, and continuously said sorry to each other. Then, I suddenly heard my name on the mic inside the venue. She then said, Go, go! They must be crowning you as Spring Queen right now! Told you so! Turns out, I wasn't Spring Queen, but I did make prom court, which I guess is kinda cool. I was wrong to ever be mad at B. She never meant to cause any harm. I know that now. Later that evening, Lee and Paul came over and thanked B as it was basically down to her that they were now together. Then Lee winked at Andy, who was standing next to me, and said, You should also thank B, because it looks like we're having another couple here. Talk about awkward! So we both just shrugged it off and pretended not to understand what she meant. We spent the rest of the night dancing and having a great time. It felt so good to have my best friend and my little sis back in my life. I've now realized that having Bella with me all the time isn't so bad. Yes, she's annoying at times, but all she wanted was to have her big sis around. And I guess I have to admit that I like having my little sis around too. I was sitting on the couch watching a movie with my mom and dad, when suddenly, the door slammed shut, and we all turned our heads to see what happened. Yep, that's my big sister Taylor making an entrance. She slumped down on the couch and banged her feet on the coffee table. Then, as she scrolled through her phone, she looked up at us and huffed out, Uh, why are you all gawping at me like I'm an animal in a zoo? Am I not welcome here? Flustered, my mom immediately replied, No, sweetie. We're all delighted to have you home. Then she turned to me. Anne, darling, go and get your sister a drink. I jumped up to my feet and did as mom asked. I know what you're thinking. Why is everyone letting Taylor get away with her Little Miss Rude routine? You see, after a huge argument with Mom, she left home at 18 and didn't come back for seven whole years. Mom seemed so pleased to have her back, so I decided to ignore Taylor's attitude and just go along with it. That afternoon, Mom asked me to go to the grocery store with her so we could buy Taylor her favorite foods, as well as a welcome back gesture. Then we spent ages preparing this delicious meal. I excitedly rushed up to Taylor's room and knocked on the door. Taylor, dinner's ready! She shouted back, Go away! But it's hamburgers, and we got a special dessert! I replied, Poof! I hate hamburgers, and there's no way I'm eating some sugar-laden dessert! I went downstairs and told Mom that she wasn't coming. Mom shrugged and tried to act like it was no big deal, but I could see the sadness in her eyes. Dad tried reassuring her by saying, She probably just needs time to settle in. Yeah, she's probably just tired, I added. Mom forced out a smile and thanked us both. Then she prepared a plate of food and asked me to bring it to Taylor. I knocked on her door and told her the food was outside. She shouted back at me, Take it away! I don't want it! I left it outside of her room. But later on, when Mom went up to bed, she saw the untouched plate of food still there. She picked it up, and she took it downstairs, and made out like it was no big deal. She wasn't fooling me. I could tell that she was biting on her gum to stop the tears. When I was little, I idolized my feisty, beautiful older sister. I loved how she wore clashing colors, the cool ways in which she styled her hair, and her carefree nature. The problem was that she didn't seem to like me. All she ever did was call me a brat, slam her bedroom door in my face, and tell me to stay away from her. 
seven years on, and I thought things would be different. She wasn't a teenager anymore. She was an adult. But nope. It seemed clear that Taylor hated me even more than ever. I don't know why. Didn't she view me as a proper sister because we had different dads? You see, my dad isn't her dad, as her dad left when she was a little girl. Then mom met my dad and had me. I don't know. I just couldn't figure out why she still disliked me so much. As the weeks went on, Taylor didn't seem to settle in at all. Instead, her behavior worsened. She played loud music until the early hours of the morning. She covered the house in her clothes, plates, cups, etc. She was the messiest person ever and never cleaned up after herself. One time, I came downstairs to see her sitting at the dinner table, munching on the sandwiches I'd made for school. Then, when I politely told her this, she snorted and said, They're gross anyway, so I'm doing you a favor. Then she took mom's car without asking her, and that meant she had to get the bus to work and ended up late. When mom talked to her about it, Taylor just smirked, threw the keys at her, said, You're out of gas, then walked off. Mom tried to keep calm and distracted herself by tidying up. So I tried hugging her, but she shrugged me off and told me to go away. It felt like Taylor could get away with everything, while I was the one getting snapped at for nothing. Still, Taylor must have been through a lot, right? Maybe she just needed some time to reconnect with Mom again. Then peace would be restored to our household. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. I was reading in the living room when I heard voices coming from outside. I went to check it out and saw mom and dad talking to our new neighbor. They sure looked friendly. Then Taylor appeared and grinning said, Making friends with the neighbor, are you mom? Mom flustered out, Taylor, this is Bill, my old classmate and our new neighbor. Isn't it a small world? So, your mom's age? Whoa, you don't look like it. Hang on, didn't you say you had a crush on some Bill? I see why. It's just a shame you rushed into remarrying, isn't it? Mom and Bill gave awkward looks, while Dad was gritting his teeth. Uh-oh, he didn't look happy. Lovely to see you, Bill. Mom muttered out before she pulled Dad and Taylor inside. Behind closed doors... She frowned at Taylor, but she just shrugged and left. This must have been playing on Dad's mind, as that evening I overheard him question Mom. Why did you never mention this bill before? Honey, it was just a slight crush when I was a teenager. You know how it is. Yeah, sure. Dad scratched his head. Now I was stuck in the middle of all this tension and it was all down to Taylor stirring the pot again. Then a couple of days later, Dad came home from work and immediately started freaking out. The bank called. Apparently I spent an obscene amount of money in a watch store. Was it you? Mom shook her head. I didn't know anything either. Then Taylor piped in. Speaking of buying stuff, we do need to get something for Bill's birthday. I mean, he did invite all of us so it'd be rude not to. Uh-oh, I know Mom hadn't got round to telling Dad that Bill had invited the whole family to his party yet. Dad gave Mom a skeptical look and snarled, Oh, I see. You used my money to buy your high school sweetheart an expensive watch? Listen to yourself! You're being ridiculous! I'm not going to stand around and listen to you accuse me like this! Then Mom stormed off. I really wanted to tell them how this morning I'd seen Taylor lingering in their room, looking suspicious. But how could I bring this up when the atmosphere was so intense? I decided I needed to confront the source of the problem, Taylor. When it was just the two of us, I said to her, I know it was you. I saw you snooping around mom's stuff. She just shrugged and replied, Little Anne, seems you're smarter than you look. Yeah, I did it. So what? Why are you being so cruel? Mom and Dad might split up because of you. To my shock, she grinned and she said, Well, that is my plan. Why should you get to play happy families when I'm stuck here without my dad? What? How could she be so selfish? I couldn't hold back my frustration anymore. 
How can you do this to Mum? I won't let you get away with this. Is that so? And what exactly is a quiet mouse like you going to do about it? Then she shoved past me and walked off. I know I needed to tell Mum, but this meant breaking her heart. <sighs> I was going to do it. I just needed to find a gentle way of telling her that her beloved daughter got a buzz out of ruining her life. But then, before I had a chance to figure this out, something terrible happened. The next day, I arrived home from school to find Mum and Dad in the kitchen. Dad had his arms folded and a stern look on his face, and Mum was in tears as she sadly peered down at some papers on the table in front of her. Divorce forms. Wh what happened Anne, you have to believe me. I didn't cheat on your father. Then Dad interrupted her. Stop lying. I can see it with my own eyes. Then he slammed a stack of photos onto the table. In the photos, Mom was kissing Bill in a cafe. Huh? This didn't make any sense. I don't understand. I didn't meet Bill yesterday. I met my friend Sandra. But Dad just got even more furious. Then he pulled his suitcase towards the door. Stop lying. I can see what happened clear as day. I can't trust you anymore. Then he left. Mum cried harder after that. I didn't know what to say or react. I wanted to believe Mum, but those photos told me differently. Suddenly, the door opened and Taylor strolled in, looked at Mum crying her heart out, and gave a delighted smirk, then went upstairs. That's right, Taylor! She must have something to do with this. So I kept an eye on her. As I passed her room, I heard her on the phone. And without a second thought, I went to find Mum and dragged her upstairs. Anyway, I owe you this time, dude. Yeah, those photos did the job. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Your Photoshop skills are brilliant. They look so real. <laughs> My mum froze. A second later, she pushed the door open. Then mum looked at Taylor and mouthed the word, Why? Taylor burst out laughing, shrugged, then replied, It's payback for loving her. She pointed at me. More than you love me. I want you all to suffer for living happily together. Why does she have you both while I have nothing? Furious. Mom slapped Taylor across the face and shouted out, I'm ashamed of you, and I want you to leave right now. Taylor clutched her face and snarled back, With pleasure. I hate it here anyway. Then she stormed out of the room, slamming the door behind her. I hugged Mom, and we both started crying. My happy family had been destroyed, and all because my sister was jealous and thought Mom loved me more. It was all so crazy. Then, later that evening, Mum received a call. From the hospital. Mum's face dropped when she told me that Taylor had been in a car crash. We rushed to the hospital, and the doctor told us Taylor needed emergency surgery. But as she'd lost lots of blood, she needed a blood donation. The problem is that she had a rare blood type. But luckily, Mum had the same. So without any hesitation... Mom told the doctor to take as much blood as Taylor needed just to save her. After the blood donation, Mom didn't recover as fast as expected. Instead, she turned weak and needed medical care. So now, Taylor was in the surgery room, and Mom was in the intensive care unit. This was terrifying. What if I lost them both? I called Dad and spilled out everything that had happened to him, and he immediately rushed to the hospital. The wait was agonizing, but when the doctor came and told me they were both going to be okay, and I could go and see Taylor, I cried with happiness. Seeing her lying there bruised and afraid, I saw a vulnerable side to her that I hadn't seen before. So, I took her hand and told her what Mom did for her. She looked embarrassed and turned away from me, and muttered out how sorry she was for everything. After that, I visited them both every day. Dad came to the hospital, too, to check they were okay, but he waited outside of Mom's room, as he knew she was still mad at him. Finally, Mom came home, 
Then a week later, Taylor was also discharged. We went to pick her up, and even though Mum and her didn't talk, I could feel the warmth between them. That night, we were having a cozy dinner. Taylor coughed to clear her voice, then said, Guys, I want to say something. I know I've been a total brat, and I'm sorry. Mum, I thought you didn't love me because I was a reminder of your previous life, and I was ruining your new, happy family vibes. But now I realize how sacred the mother-daughter bond is. You never left me out. I left myself out. And Anne, I'm sorry I haven't been the big sis I should have been for you. I was jealous of you. But I was wrong to be that way. I hope you can both forgive me. Dad also apologized to Mum for misunderstanding her. We were all blubbering. And then we all hugged each other. We didn't need to say anything. Her actions were enough. We were family, and we loved each other. Families aren't always straightforward, but family is family, through the good times and the bad. And they're always worth fighting for, regardless of how out of this world annoying they can be at times. Trust me, I know all about it. Have any of you ever worn braces before? If you have, I feel for you. I really hope your experience was better than mine. I thought braces would make my life so much better, but oh boy, was I wrong. It all started because of how ugly my teeth were. They were short and had such big gaps between them. My friends sometimes made jokes about them and it really hurt my feelings, but I tried to hide how I felt and laugh along with them. Because my parents worked away all the time, I lived with my grandparents in New Jersey, and they never thought there was any problem with my teeth. They said they'd grow as I got older, but honestly, I couldn't handle the teasing anymore. Eventually, I decided to take matters into my own hands. Every time my parents sent me pocket money, I'd save every cent. By my senior year of middle school, I'd finally saved up enough money, and so I went to the dentist and asked him for braces. My dentist said I need to wear them for about two years, and I thought that wouldn't be such a big deal, right? I mean, a few of my friends had braces too, and they still looked pretty, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case for me. My teeth were so messed up that normal braces just wouldn't cut it. My one friend had recently got these invisible braces, so I asked my dentist if I could get the same ones, but he said I needed something more hardcore. I ended up with black iron braces, and they made me look even uglier than before. How stupid I'd been to think that braces would magically make my teeth better. My friends thought it was hilarious and said I looked like I had train tracks inside my mouth. Everyone was laughing at me, and slowly, I started to distance myself from them. Those days were some of the worst of my life, and all I wanted was to run away where no one would know me. So after I graduated from middle school, I persuaded my parents to let me go live with them in New York. I figured that I could start again with a clean slate at my new school. But seeing as I still had two years to go with the braces, I needed to make a plan. I didn't want to be the kid everyone laughed at anymore, so I decided to fake being mute so that I could hide my braces. On the first day at my new school, I'd prepared a letter that said I was mute due to oral surgery affecting my larynx, and that I was in the recovery phase, but it could take years to heal. I even faked my parents' signatures. Luckily for me, they were too busy to take me to school on my first day, so everything was going to plan. I thought someone might be at least a little suspicious, but no one asked me about it. And even the teachers gave me sympathy and said everything would be okay, and I'd still do well in my classes. I couldn't believe it. I knew I had to be careful though. So I separated myself from the other kids so they wouldn't try and talk to me. I didn't even eat lunch in the cafeteria because I was too afraid people would see how embarrassing I looked when I ate. I seriously had to open my mouth wide and chew super carefully. And afterwards, there was always chunks of food stuck in my braces. But ugly teeth aside, I actually wasn't bad looking. In fact, thanks to the braces, I'd lost 10 kilograms. So my body was looking quite good. If I didn't open my mouth, I was kind of pretty. And because I kept myself separate from everyone, there was an air of mystery about me. After a week or so, a few guys started approaching me, trying to flirt with me, but I just ignored them. I knew if I opened my mouth, it would be game over. I could see they thought I was a bit of a diva, but it was better than revealing my ugly secret. 
There was one guy called Jake that I secretly liked, though, and I knew he liked me too, as he always tried to speak to me. But of course, I ignored him, and it made me feel so bad. Anytime he came up to me, I'd pretend to be busy or act like he was invisible. I wish I could just be honest with him, but then he wouldn't be into me. I mean, what guy wanted to date a girl with braces like mine? And as for the girls, they didn't like me one bit. One time, a girl in my class called Angela tried to ask me a question, and I just walked away from her. She shouted after me, asking me why I was being so rude and said that no one had ever ignored her before. She was the most popular girl at school, and ever since that day, she started to treat me so badly. I heard her whispering to her friends that I should be at a school for disabled kids, and then one day she even came and told me that to my face. I was so upset. This school was just as bad as my old one. I didn't understand how people could be so mean. But that was nothing. It was about to get worse. One day, I woke up with a cold. I couldn't stop coughing and sneezing, but there was no way I could miss school as we had an exam that day. I decided to wear a face mask so no one would see my braces if I had to cough or sneeze. When I finished the exam, I was at my locker and suddenly the biggest sneeze came. I ended up sneezing five times in a row and afterwards I said, Jesus, out loud as a reflex. Then I panicked. I was supposed to be mute and I just spoken. What if someone heard me? Well, someone did. I turned around and Angela was standing there with her friends. They were looking at me in shock and Angela said, I thought you couldn't speak, hmm? Then she walked towards me and reached out to pull my mask off. Suddenly Jake appeared and stopped her. He told her to back off and then he stood there protecting me. No one had done something so nice for me in years. That's when Jake and I started hanging out. We would go to the library for walks in the forest and even play piano together. I used a small notebook to write down whatever I wanted to say to him. And of course, I just smiled, never laughed when I was with him. But then one day he leaned in to kiss me and the worst thing ever happened. The thought of his lips touching the metal braces in my mouth made me disgusted with myself. So when his lips touched mine, I got such a fright, I basically head butted him. And when I realized what a stupid thing I was doing, blood was pouring out of his nose. Both of us frantically tried to stop the bleeding. I felt so ashamed of what I'd done that I had to try so hard not to cry in front of him. And he also blushed shyly. After that, it was hard to fully relax with him. Even though I liked him so much, I was so afraid that he'd catch a glimpse of my monster teeth and then break up with me. Little did I know what was just around the corner. One morning I was walking to my locker when I realized everyone was staring at me. I felt so self-conscious and didn't understand why they were all looking at me. And then I saw it. Plastered across my locker were tons of photos of me. And they were all of me from middle school. From when I hadn't worn braces to when I had it full of my mouth. They were the worst photos ever. I was ugly and fat in them and I couldn't believe someone could be so cruel. As I stood there in shock, Angela walked up to me and said, You're a liar. A monster pretending to be a mute little princess. Well, the truth is out now. Then she turned to everyone watching us and told them I really could speak. Turns out her cousin was in my old middle school. They'd been hanging out and she told Angela that I wasn't mute and hadn't had any surgery and that I just had ugly teeth. When she triumphantly walked past me, my anger flared up and for a moment I lost control. I rushed in and pushed her down the hallway. Then I jumped in to sit on her back and started pulling her hair and then I saw blood and that's the moment when I realized I'd taken it too far. Her front teeth had broken when she'd fallen. Everyone was taking photos. I was sitting on Angela's back holding her hair and my mouth was wide open revealing hideous braces. Jake was also present in the crowd and looked at me in awe. I don't know if it was me or Angela who was more humiliating in this situation. After that, Angela had to wear big black iron braces just like me. The dentist said there were problems with her root canal, so she couldn't have implants. The only solution was wearing braces and hoping that her other teeth would move and fill the gaps. And my parents had to come to the school and apologize. And of course, I was suspended for what I did, not just for pushing Angela, but also the fact I forged my parents' signature. Jake never spoke to me again, which broke my heart. But what hurt even more was what happened a few weeks later. I found out Jake and Angela started dating. I couldn't believe it. I knew Angela was only doing it to get back at me, but it made me wonder, did that mean Jake didn't find girls with braces ugly? Why did I hide mine then? And there's one thing I still want to know. How do they kiss when Angela has a mouthful of braces?
Finally, I'm out of that morbid place. Now let me tell you, sharing a cell with a dozen other noisy, stinky, grumpy dudes ain't fun. Anyway, here I am. Free as a bird now. Hmm. So no one's here to pick me up. Suppose I'd have to call mom. It took me a few seconds to familiarize myself with my phone. Jeez. It'd been four years. It was a miracle I hadn't turned into one of those leg-cradling crazy dudes. How I ended up in there in the first place was a joke. All I did was take some stuff from one or two warehouses and sell them on. No big deal. Yo, Mom, it's your boy, Cole. I'm out, and yeah, I need to lift home. I spoke the moment I heard Mom's voice. Cole, oh, I... Do you have any idea what hell your actions have put your mother through? My dad was so good at overreacting, but I needed somewhere to stay so I could handle him. But Dad, Mom, come on, I'm still your son. You have the heart to see me homeless and sleeping next to rats? There was a brief pause. Then Dad grunted, You can stay for a few weeks, but only for your mother's sake. Thanks, Dad. You're the man. Bingo. My parents were like putty in my hands. This was the life. I played video games all day, then partied all night. Then one night, I was getting ready to meet my friend Moose, when Mom told me that the pizza delivery guy was at the door. I shouted down to her, You can shout me this one, and I'll get the next. I finished getting ready, and I must say, I was looking smooth. I strode down into the kitchen and grabbed a slice of pizza. Dad was sitting there glaring at me over his report. If you can't afford to pay for items, then I suggest you don't order them. He looked at the pizza slice in my hand. Mom walked up behind him and placed her hands on his shoulders. Darling, give him some more time. He's still adjusting to outside life. Thanks, Mom. You're the greatest. I gave her a greasy pizza kiss on the cheek. Um, any chance you can lend me some dough? Dad shook his head and sighed while Mom went over to her purse and passed me some money. Hey, there'd be plenty of time to get a job and be responsible. Right now, I had four years of lost time to make up for. Once, I borrowed Dad's car. I swear I only had a couple of beers, but the world glitched out and went all blurry. The next thing I know, I'd driven straight into the neighbor's front yard. Oops. I opened my eyes the next morning to a killer headache. So all I wanted was some black coffee and a plate full of bacon. But I got Dad's death stare instead. Just when I think you can't get any more irresponsible, you took my car without asking, drank too much, then drove into Gloria's beloved rose bushes. Chill out, Dad. I'll fix it later, I said as I raided the fridge for food. You're not the one having to pay for the damages. We've made our decision. You have one week to get out of our house. Now hold up. I had zero places to go. I couldn't stay with Moose as he was crashing in his sister's garage and I didn't know anyone else. How could they? Ugh, I gotta chill a bit. So I pulled out my phone and started scrolling through dating apps. Then I matched with this stunning blonde called Trudy. She's a little older than me, but her family is rolling in dough, and also, she has her own business. Not only that, but she's hotter than an agitated dragon. So yeah, her photos seemed a little grainy, but guess the retro trend was in. Looks like I had it both ways. Love, and money. I have quite a face, but since I love beer and pizza, and without any dedication for the gym, I don't have the perfect body, but I needed to keep this girl interested. So I told her I was a tall dude with an impressive six-pack, who just graduated and was on the lookout for a girl with brains as well as beauty. This girl was actually pretty easy to talk to. She sent me pictures of her latest purchases, like phones, expensive watches, and designer clothes, along with the promise that when we started dating in person, she'd buy me whatever I wanted. Result. After four days of face pics and my priceless conversation, Trudy was smitten, and she sent me a message saying, Cole, I haven't known you long, but I know how I feel. I love you. X. Okay, that's really fast, but yeah, I've won the lottery over here. Hey, maybe she lied about her look too, but it didn't matter. She's rich. So I replied to her, I know, babes, I feel it too. X, we immediately arranged to meet in person and decided on a yellow dress code. I looked around the park trying to spot this gold mine, but all I could see was some old lady in a yellow dress. Okay, coincident, but why is she heading my way? The closer she got toward me, the wider her grin was. 
Cole, right? It's me, Trudy. What? No, 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 no. How come this corny, overweight, wrinkly old lady be Trudy? I was expecting the blonde beauty from the photos, not Big Bird. Once I got over the initial shock, we sat down and talked. Turns out my dream girl was in her 50s. All the descriptions and photos of her were true, but 30 years ago. She was clearly in the middle of a midlife crisis or something. You're not the same either, she sneered. You're barely taller than me. And where's the gym body? All right, fair enough. I fake smiled. Yeah, despite you looking different, I still find you very beautiful. That night, I tossed and turned. This was all so unexpected. Trudy was totally not my type. But dating her might not hurt. She was rich. And also, I had to move out tomorrow. So at least she'd pay for me. With that, I sent her a message. Babe, you're beautiful, and I want to make us official. X. The next day, I moved in with Trudy. Now, let me tell you something. Her apartment was lavish. It was full of the latest tech. Crazy. Seeing as she was so old, she probably didn't know how to use them. She worked a lot, so most of the time I was home alone. And I was free to watch cartoons and movies, munch on potato chips, and play as many video games as I felt like. One time, I was watching a movie when the door opened. And in stepped this glary-eyed dude. I shouted at him, Hey dude! You have the wrong apartment! He tutted and said, I can assure you that I don't. I'm Alex, Trudy's son, and you must be Cole. I would say it's a pleasure to meet my mother's gold-digging boyfriend in the flesh, but unfortunately, it's not. What? Trudy has a son? And by the looks, he's even older than me. And how dare he called me a gold digger? I suppose I was, but still, he had no right to call me it. Even worse, he refused to leave. He just sat in the kitchen and waited for his mom to return. Then he had a heated argument with her in which he referred to me as a loser and a bum. Things weren't any better with my parents either. Dad told me to be independent and get a real job, not a sugar mama. And mom was just crying. Psh, whatever. This was their fault for kicking me out in the first place. What did they expect me to do? Live under a bridge? Few days after I met Alex, Trudy insisted on dragging me along to his lame work launch thing. As soon as I got there, I went straight to the food. I was stuffing a mini quiche into my mouth when this girl walked up alongside me and said, <laughs> Great minds think alike. I gave her a gormless look. Then she pointed at the food. We both headed straight for the food. I laughed at that. <laughs> this girl was funny. And hot. Really hot. Her name is Beatrice, and she works for that loser, Alex. After that, I started seeing a lot more of this Beatrice girl, as she often popped over with Alex. And while he was arguing with his mom, usually about me, I chatted to her. That was how I found out she wasn't having it easy either. She was behind on her rent because her truant brother had stolen the money and spent it all. I felt bad for her. So I took the envelope full of cash that Trudy had given to me, and I handed it to her. Okay, so I wouldn't be able to buy anything new for a few weeks, but it was worth it just to know that she'd be okay. Truth was, I was really falling for Beatrice, but I couldn't do anything about it, as I was with Trudy, and I was reliant on her handouts. Soon, things became stinky. I came out of the shower to see Trudy standing there with my phone in her hand. How could you? She threw it at me. Yeah, so she'd read all of the messages I'd sent to Moose, saying how I didn't find her remotely attractive and I was only with her for a free ride. Trudes, my babes, come on, those messages were just me joking, I laughed. I was just messing around. Shut up, you liar. You find me hideous. Alex was right. You were only using me for my money. And worse, you never went to college. Instead, you were in jail. I was about to lay on the coal charm when Alex and Beatrice bursted into the room. Alex shouted at me. How low life you are. What a shameless gold digger. <laughs> it's appalling. I've told her to report you to the cops. Beatrice interrupted. No, don't do that. What Cole did was wrong, but he's not all that bad. Please. I was so moved. Took a look around. Trudy was crying. Alex was so furious his eyes were bulging. And Beatrice, well, she just looked disappointed. I then packed my stuff and left in shame. Well, that was a few months ago, and I have a decent job now. 
Even though I live back at home, I pay my way, and I'm saving up to put a deposit down on my own place. I never should have used Trudy like that. She might be old, but she still has feelings, and the way I treated her wasn't right. I was undeniably a douchebag back then. All I want is to have a happy life with Beatrice. I really love her, which is why I asked her to be my girlfriend, but she rejected me. Man, it's stung, but I'm not giving up. Perhaps she might give me a chance once she sees I've changed. I can't fix the past. All I can do now is improve myself and keep on rolling forward. I was so nervous. Like, the most nervous I'd ever been in my life. I didn't even know it was possible for a press conference to get so crowded. Suddenly the flashes came at me from every direction. It was almost blinding, but the clicking didn't stop, as well as the sound of them calling my name. Hazel, look here! Here, over here, Hazel! Oh my gosh, why was this so chaotic? I started to panic, so I ran away. But I'd only taken a few steps before... Thump! Oh, these stupid high heels. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Well, let's be real. It's kind of hard to see anyone from this angle. Then from every direction, the reporters swarmed in like starving vultures trying to take pictures of me. I was still confused and didn't know what to do when... Gentlemen, please give her some space. Are you okay? Robert, my adoptive dad, came to help me up. Um, excuse us, this is her first time attending such a crowded event. If it's all right with you, we'll help her answer your questions. Phew, I'd finally escaped the chaos. Or so I thought. As soon as he got into the house, Robert shouted, Pamela! Which gave me the fright of my life. Didn't I tell you to teach Hazel some manners? How could you let her embarrass herself in front of the public like that? Pamela looked mortified, and kept bowing down and apologizing, but Robert was still furious. If this happens again, you better pack your bags and get out of here. I felt so guilty. It was all because of me that she had been shouted out like that. But I'd done my best. Clearly, it wasn't good enough, though. I tried to forget about it, but early the next morning, Pamela woke me up. She gave me a timetable and told me that from now on, I wouldn't need to go to school anymore and that a tutor would come to teach me at home instead. What? Why all of a sudden? I asked Pamela in shock. It was because of yesterday's incident. The mayor has decided that you need to spend more time learning the necessary etiquette. Are you serious? He can't just keep me locked up here. No way. Hazel? Listen, you should be grateful that you got adopted into this house. Keep in mind of everything Mr. Cornelius has done for you, and obediently do as I say. Do you understand what I mean? Looking into Pamela's eyes, I knew I had no choice but to agree. Ugh. The day of the opening ceremony for the town hall had finally arrived, and I got to leave the house for the first time in a month. A whole month. Now was the moment of truth. In the eyes of the public, I had completely transformed into a proper, prestigious lady. When Robert started speaking at the ceremony, he announced a charity fundraiser for my orphanage in the hopes that children like me would be given a chance to live a better life. Hearing this speech, I could barely hold back my tears. I was sitting next to my adoptive mom, Eleanor, so I turned to give her a big hug. Suddenly, all eyes were on me, and it seemed I'd finally done something right. I smiled up at Robert, and we both had tears in our eyes. Maybe Pamela was right. I really was lucky to have been adopted by such kind people. But as soon as we got home, things changed. My parents got all quiet and went off to their room, leaving me alone. Where was my praise? I'd done so well, hadn't I? Why weren't they happy? The following days, they still asked me to join them for their events, so I guess I must have done a good job. And while the media and public were around, they were all touchy-feely and affectionate towards me, constantly praising me. We must have looked like the perfect family. But the minute we got home, they'd ignore me, and if they wanted to tell me something, they'd get Pamela to speak to me. It was so flipping weird. I actually started to feel quite lonely and depressed. And even though I was living in the lap of luxury, I missed the orphanage. One day, Pamela's daughter, aka the only friend I had in this enormous mansion, Paisley saw how upset I was and asked, Hey, so why do you agree to move into this house? You're clearly unhappy here. Paisley got me. She was the same age as me, so we were on the same wavelength. 
I was nervous to tell her how I felt, but I knew she would understand, so I told her everything. The thing is, I actually have a sister. She's only eight, and she's called Amber. That's why I was missing the orphanage. She was still there. She's got congenital heart disease, so after our parents passed away, the orphanage couldn't afford her hospital bills. When the mayor's family decided to adopt me, I refused because I didn't want to leave Amber alone. But then Robert offered to pay for her medical treatments if I agreed. And well, the rest is history. You see, I can't just leave. If I did, what would happen to Amber? Oh, Hazel, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. But I need to be honest with you. One time I overheard Robert and Eleanor saying that you were the perfect girl to play this role. Huh? What role? That meant, were they using me for something? It didn't make any sense, but those words kept lingering on my mind until... One time Eleanor asked me to join her at a charity event, which she said was going to be broadcast on TV. Our job was to prepare homemade food and give it out to the homeless. I was so excited, but when I walked into our kitchen... I discovered the chefs had already cooked everything before the filming crew arrived. I was so disappointed and asked Eleanor about it. She just laughed and said, Oh, no, sweetie, our job is just to look pretty and graceful in front of the camera. Then before distributing the food, she gave me a pair of gloves and said, Don't touch any of their hands, okay? They are filthy. Oh my gosh, how could she say such things? Oh, then it hit me. I understood what Paisley had said now. The affection and kindness that the Corneliuses were showing me was actually just for show. All to win over the audience, aka the public, while this was their very true face. I had to do something about this. I couldn't let them keep on deceiving the public like this. So when Eleanor went to the bathroom and took off her gloves, I quickly grabbed them and threw them in the trash. When we went back out, a homeless man approached her to express his gratitude and asked for a handshake. Of course, she tried to refuse, but at that moment, the camera turned to her, so she had no choice but to give in. And you know what? The man didn't just shake her hand. He even pulled Eleanor in for a big hug. I couldn't hold back my laughter at how flustered she looked. Served her right. Afterward, Eleanor grabbed my arm and dragged me to a quiet corner. Then she said, It was you who did this, wasn't it? I pretended to have no idea what she was talking about, and this just infuriated her even more. Then later that evening when we got home, Robert was already waiting and shouted at me. What do you think you're playing at? I was confused, but then Eleanor added, Don't you ever mess with me like that again. Now listen closely. Don't you miss your little sis? Aren't you curious if she's doing okay or not? That's right. You better have behaved yourself from now on, young lady. I was so shaken by what they'd said. I didn't even want to leave my room. What if something happened to my sister? Then suddenly, Paisley climbed through my window into my room. As soon as I saw her, I burst into tears. Paisley, please help me with this. I need you to go to my orphanage and check on Amber and see if she's okay. A few hours later, Paisley came back panting. Your sister? She's not doing good. What? But... Hadn't she been receiving money for her monthly treatments? Paisley shook her head. The nuns there said they hadn't received a penny since you left. Now Amber is barely surviving. Paisley's words broke my heart. Those two had been fooling me all this time, and now my sister's life was hanging on by a thread. I had to get to the bottom of this. I walked past Robert's office, and that's when I overheard someone talking. Curious, I peeked in and saw a group of middle-aged men sitting around a table. One of them spoke up. Hey, Robert, the election day is coming. Is that little girl still doing a decent job? Oh, don't worry about her. She's just a silly little kid. She believes anything I tell her, especially about her sick sister. Robert smirked. How dare he speak about my sister like that? I had to do something. I couldn't let this vicious man keep on fooling everyone like he'd done to me. So I took out my phone and started filming. Speaking of which... How much charity money have we got so far? One hundred thousand dollars, Robert said, and the room was filled with praise. Gentlemen, by the time of the closing party for the charity this weekend, we should have almost five hundred thousand dollars for the election campaign. As soon as I win, your business will continue to be tax reduced for the next four years. I had to cover my mouth to stop myself from gasping. 
So this whole time, he'd been exploiting me and the orphanage for his corruption? Gosh, I was such an idiot to fall right into his trap. Suddenly, my phone buzzed. Who's there? Robert shouted and rushed to the door. Oh no! Panicked, I ran, but not far enough before I tripped and the phone flew out of my hand. Robert and his men caught up with me, picked up my phone, and deleted all my evidence. They even took the phone away from me. He turned to me and said, I've already warned you, have I not? You're a liar, I yelled. You haven't paid a penny to my sister, Robert growled. Who told you that? But all he had for an answer was my silence and fuming look. Furious, he dragged me back to my room. Maid, bring me the keys to her room. And then he locked me up inside until the day of the closing party of the charity rolled around, where they'd be announcing the amount of money they'd collected. That day, all the staff were out of the mansion. Suddenly, I heard the door being unlocked. Panicked, I hid behind the closet. Hazel, where are you? Oh, it was just Paisley. Ah. She found a way to sneak me out of the mansion and told me to run straight back to the orphanage. But no, first I had to expose that sly old fox Robert. Luckily, when I got to the event, Robert was giving his speech. I immediately ran up to the stage, snatched the mic, and told everyone about his evil plan. But I was no match for him. Before I could finish, security was dragging me off the stage, and Robert had already taken control of the situation. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry for my daughter's behavior. She's... The reason why we decided to adopt her was that she's mentally ill. Since she came to our home, she has become better, but as you can see, there's been a bit of a relapse. What a snake! This jerk would stop at nothing to get what he wanted. Just then, the big screen on stage suddenly showed the video I'd taken, revealing all the schemes of Robert and his accomplices. Now he was well and truly exposed. I watched as he stammered. No, this can't be happening. Right at that moment, the police rushed in to arrest Robert and his accomplices in the stands. You might be wondering how we pulled that off. Well, as I was running through the hallway, I managed to send the video to Paisley. As soon as she received it, she came to find me and saw everything that had happened. So she secretly ran to her mom for help. Pamela then made a plan. While Paisley freed me from the mansion, Pamela set to work on projecting the video on the big screen. Genius, right? A month later, Robert and his accomplices were arrested for embezzlement. And, of course, he got locked up for a long, long time. Both him and Eleanor received such massive backlash from the public, to the point that she had to stay hidden away too. The charity money, luckily, was brought back to the orphanage, and part of it was used to take care of my sister Amber. She's doing much better now. Oh, and Paisley and I are still best of friends. Pamela has found a way better job. And as for me, I went back to stay at the orphanage until I'm old enough to move out. I'm better off being on my own with my sister than being adopted by some mess. So, here I am, practicing this tricky pose. I must not fall over. Rosie, straighten your back. Hang in there. You've got this. That's Bradley, my yoga instructor. Can you see that? There are more than a dozen people in this class, yet he only seems to encourage me. Did this mean he liked me? I didn't need to look in a mirror to know my cheeks were lobster red right now. I'm Rosie, by the way. 18 years old. I'm still single. Not to brag, but I know I'm kind of pretty, friendly, and fun to be around. So it's easy to tell that many guys are into me. But why do none of them ever dare to confess their feelings to me? Hmm. What were they so afraid of? Take Bradley, for instance. He clearly liked me, but was too shy to admit it. It was so obvious, as he kept deterring past my mat just so he could check out my position. Even my best friend Joseph noticed that, as every time Bradley approached, Joseph would have this cheeky smirk on and send me signals with his eyes. I already told him not to do that. After class, Joseph kept teasing me about it. He told me Bradley definitely had feelings for me and just needed one more push for leverage. Although I reluctantly told him to stop, he insisted on being the wingman by texting Bradley about me. Bradley, why don't you ask Rosie out? You two look really cute together. Come on, you know that wouldn't work. Huh? <laughs> why not? Because, Joseph, it's you I'm crazy about. I was not okay. What was the problem with all the men around me? Why didn't they like me? 
I couldn't go on like this. I must have a boyfriend. And I was dead serious about it. So after researching online, I found a dating coach to save me from my tragic single situation. So Martin, my coach, is super handsome, has a six pack, and his business is a big hit. He's helped hundreds of sad single people find love. Flashy enough to trust, isn't it? Still, I was quite nervous when I met him. You know, the feeling that a therapist would judge you before treating you. But actually, he was reassuring, very open and didn't ask too many questions. Let's just be open about this, all right? Manipulating someone into dating you is not the foundation to a healthy relationship. But don't worry, as I have the secret. Day one. And according to Martin, I needed to learn how to approach new people. I'm pretty shy, so taking the initiative was hard for me. But Martin taught me a trick. When I see a cute guy, I need to approach him within three seconds. This way my brain wouldn't have time to think, analyze, then talk myself out of it, and end up missing my chance. Okay, a hot guy was there staring at his phone. I must not overthink. One, two, three, go. Hi. Hi. Um, so I just saw you and I think you're really hot. I'm here to say hi. Thanks for thinking my boyfriend's hot, but he's taken. I panicked, then rushed back to Martin and spluttered out, I, I, I can't. Hey, that was a success. You're just training your mind and body to take action. Go ahead. No way. Should we move to the next step? And this was the next step. I just needed to start a conversation in this place where everyone was in a mood to have a chat. It's simple, Rosie. Put yourself in a talkative mood. Go over to them and give them a compliment. But make sure it's genuine, else it won't count, okay? Got it. I spotted a man sitting alone, so I walked over to him. Hey, I like your... ring. O-M-G. Was that a wedding ring? <laughs> don't, don't worry. I'm single. And is it that hard to think of something to compliment me on? <laughs> and, um... You are smarter than you look. And yep, he left. Oh, what kind of compliment was that? Martin sat in a corner and watched me go from guy to guy and stutter out a string of terrible compliments. You did great, Rosie. Don't be discouraged. Now, when you actually see someone you like, you'll be more natural. Martin said that body language is a crucial part of keeping the conversation going. So, the plan was to practice this at Joseph's birthday party. This time Martin couldn't be there in person, but we still stayed in touch via my Bluetooth earphone so he could guide me. The mission today was to initiate physical contact with someone and make them feel close to me. Anyone who knows me knows that I am not good with these things. So I kept giving them this weird slap on the back. Hey, I heard an ouch. Are you hitting them? I said just a light tap. I don't think I can do this. I'm too shy. And now guys are giving me weird looks. Martin said this time I should make the boys take the initiative, and then things would come more naturally. Okay, I'll give it one last try. This boy I like, Nathan, is over by the pool, but he's in a group. Nothing to worry about. You'll make him come to you. Now listen and follow. I walked over to the bar and made sure I was in Nathan's eyesight, sat as naturally as possible, made eye contact with him, and smiled. Oh, Martin, this is stupid. He doesn't even know me. Just wait. OMG. He's waving at me. Should I come now? No, no, no. Wave him over. Okay. You should take responsibility for this, Martin. I waved Nathan over. Then, to my surprise, he got up and started walking toward me. OMG, help. What should I do? Give a no-tooth smile. Then say, I just want to say hi. What? That was all? but he was coming closer and I had no choice. I just want to say hi. And I want to have your phone number, cutie. I couldn't believe it. That was a real success. We texted the whole night. We got on so well. He was clearly flirting with me. This is crazy. But then two weeks passed by and I didn't hear from him at all. I kept on looking at my phone, expecting Nathan to call, but he never did. So I immediately rang my coach for help. Ready for the bad news? So, that means he doesn't like you. A busy man like Napoleon could still write thousands of romantic love letters to his Josephine. If he was into you, he'd always find a way. And 
I also think he doesn't seem like a good type to date. What? Nathan is such a sweet guy. Maybe he's just super busy? But then Christmas came, and I couldn't wait any longer. I mustered up the courage to ask Nathan out. But guess what? He invited me to his house to enjoy Christmas with his family instead. Oh, wow. He wanted to introduce me to his family. This was massive. It meant he really took our relationship seriously, didn't he? But when we got to Nathan's place, to my surprise, it was just a small apartment and definitely not big enough for a whole family. Seeing my confused look, Nathan said his family must have changed their plans and went out, which was for the better as the two of us would have more time together. Suddenly, I saw a shadow of a girl in a red dress in his bedroom. Then Nathan immediately pulled me away and said, Uh, um, that's my maid. How annoying. So, do you want to go to the hotel so we can have more time alone? Really? Did he think I was born yesterday? I refused immediately, and Nathan began to change his attitude. <laughs> okay, but I can't drive you home. I have something urgent. But don't worry, I'll take you to the nearby bus stop. I have never felt so stupid. Martin was right. Nathan wasn't serious about me. He just wanted to use me. But what went wrong? I did everything I could, but I kept failing again and again. No one liked me. I called Martin in tears, and he ended up driving there to pick me up right on Christmas Eve. I felt like the most tragic person ever. Martin was so patient. He turned the radio on so loud and didn't say anything until I finished crying and calmed down. Misread the signals again, huh? How could I have known? Well, I'm not saying this to make money off you, but looking at the current situation, I think you need to hire me for longer than you think. My love life may have sucked, but at least I had Martin. Here's my hope. He was the best coach ever, as he didn't mind answering my questions, and he always picked up the phone whether it was office hours or midnight. Then one night I was out with my friends. I drank a few too many wines and phoned Martin up and slurred out a load of drunken nonsense. He immediately came to pick me up and drove me home, saying that he needed to make sure I got home safely. He was such a sweet guy. I felt something, but then reassured myself that he was just being nice. But Joseph insisted that Martin was only acting this way because he liked me. Seeing everything he did, and you still have to wonder about his feelings? Dummy. Believe me, I'm not wrong this time. Mr. Sixpack is crazy about you. Congrats. Hmm. Thinking about it, it did make sense. So I started stalking my coach on social media and daydreaming about him. Then, taking Martin's own advice that I needed to make my feelings known. So, on Valentine's night, I, myself, made this box of chocolates and took them round to his. I took a deep breath, then rang the doorbell. But then, standing at the door was him holding hands with another girl. I awkwardly said, Don't, don't you like me? I mean, you taught me that when a guy likes a girl... He'll always be there for her. You picked me up in the middle of the night, and you always listened and comforted me when I was sad. You even brought me hot tea when my Aunt Flo came to visit. Doesn't everything match up? R Rosie, I was just being nice. Sorry, but you've confused the signs. Again. I was totally dumbfounded. I couldn't face the thought of seeing Martin ever again, so I blocked him from my life. Ugh. In the following days... I was under a variety of emotional states, from extreme stress, heartbreak, embarrassment, then disappointment because of my extra delusion. I struggled with insomnia almost every night and tried to bury my feelings by binge-eating junk food. Just two weeks later, I looked at myself in the mirror. There were dark circles under my eyes, my skin was dry and flaky, and I felt bloated and sluggish most of the time. Seeing myself like that reminded me of something Martin had said. How can you expect someone else to love you if you don't love yourself? I knew I needed to change, so I started eating more healthily, working out, and finding me time. And you know what? It worked. Now I can finally say that I see my own worth, and I'll never allow a man to treat me badly ever again. And if that means I stay single for a while, then that's the way it'll be. I guess I kinda owe Martin a lot. I mean, he did teach me loads. And now, even though I'm still single... I'm enjoying it. There are way more important things than having a boyfriend, right? But wait, 
Was this barista winking at me? OMG, there's a post-it with his number on my coffee cup. What should I do? Hey, dating a coffee guy is risky business. Why, coach? Imagine one day, your relationship turns bad, and you desire a cup of coffee to ease your heart out, but you also have to see him here. Awkward, huh? Indeed a pro. But so, why are you making this awkward convo? <laughs> Rosie, I may be a love coach, but even I get it wrong sometimes. When it comes to my heart, all theories are nonsense. Please, you show me how to love naturally. Um, well, as you can see, I'm dating my dating coach. But now, our love doesn't apply to any cliches. Instead, we just do us, and we're both happier than ever. If you're in a dating slump, then don't worry. Just let love happen when it happens, and follow you. Is it usual for you to sit on strangers the first time you meet them? This jerk! I'll show him that he's messing with the wrong girl! It's fine! Please don't hit him! Don't worry. And this is for mugging a kid! No, no, you've got it wrong! He just saved me from those muggers, and he was just teaching me how to fight back at them. Oh my, I thought it was just because the boy's bag was on the ground and that guy was holding his arm like he was about to hit him. I awkwardly stood up, literally screamed out to apologize, then ran straight home. So, as you can see, my home's a little different from the usual. My parents run a nursing home, so I grew up surrounded by the elderly. You were so embarrassed that you left him laying there and ran away? The first time I met my husband, I also knocked him over with my dolio chagi. Perhaps this boy is your destiny. Poof! No way, Mrs. Jones. Suddenly, my dad huffed past us. Oh no, I know that look. Something was bad. Lately, our finances haven't been so good. I went after him to check he was okay and found him talking to a man in the yard. On seeing me, the strange man waved me over. Do you know this person? Huh? That was the guy I almost punched earlier. That's right. The person you almost knocked out is my son. I saw everything, so I followed you here. He's got in with a bad crowd and lost focus on his studies. I want you to steer him in the right direction. I... I don't want to be a babysitter. I'm sorry. It's too bad about this nursing retreat, isn't it? Seems like it'll have to close soon. Although, if swayed, I don't mind being a major sponsor. <gasps> this was insane! So, all I needed to do was keep an eye on his son, and all the nursing home's problems would be solved? Dad said I didn't have to do it if I didn't want to, but how could I say no? Okay, I'll do it! So, which school am I transferring to? Jeez, everything here was so shiny. But if I had a choice, this would be the last school in town I ever wanted to attend. I entered the classroom and walked over to the only empty seat that happened to be at the back. I was about to sit down, then... Ah! Some dude pulled the chair aside and caused me to fall onto my butt. A hand appeared to pull me up, but as I went to grab it, it immediately drew back, leaving me sitting there embarrassed while everyone's laughing at me. Oops, sorry. I guess I should only give a hand when asked, right? Ugh, it was Blake. I quickly regained my cool face, sat down, and put on my headphones, pretending like I didn't hear any of those comments from other students about my rustic look. This girl seems interesting. The usual. A grand if you can win her heart in a month. Deal? Blake glanced at me and sneered at the guy. Easy. Deal. So that's how it's gonna be, is it? Luckily, I hadn't turned my music on yet, hence why I heard the whole conversation. Let me help you get some extra pocket money then, Blake. And it didn't take him long to start implementing his plan. At lunchtime, he enthusiastically led me to the canteen, guided me to get food, and even asked the lunch lady to get me an extra portion of yogurt. Nice try. I was trying to enjoy my lunch when a shrill voice sounded out. Get up and get me some food. I want a cupcake just like yours. Now! Jeez, why did some girls think it was okay to treat guys like this? 
Frustrated, I went over there, picked up the cake from that boy's tray, and shoved it into her mouth. There, happy now? Poor thing, your arms must be so broken that you can't get food yourself. Let me feed you then. You're welcome. Are you crazy? You're dead meat today. She raised her hand about to slap me, but I quickly dodged, causing her to fall to the ground. As for me, I calmly sat down next to the boy and had my lunch. Sorry for wasting the cake. You can have my yogurt if you want. He's Kai, my first friend at this new school. He's witty, smart, and has a seriously impressive academic record. He was actually here on scholarship, which explained why he didn't quite fit in, just like me. I noticed how Blake seemed rather annoyed and kept staring at me. I bet he was just fed up with being teased by his friends, since I just totally ignored him. Oh, but he didn't give up that easily. The next morning, he showed up at mine to pick me up, but I'd rather run two laps around the schoolyard for being late than share a ride with you. Then at school, he tripped me up and then reached out his hand pretending to help. But between you and the floor, I picked the floor. He even waited for me at the school gates with a huge bouquet of roses. But I just took one look at them, then started coughing. Are you allergic to flowers? <coughs> nope. I'm allergic to immature and boring people, like you. Then I walked off. Ugh, as if every girl was going to fall for these lame tricks. This carried on for the next few weeks. But then one time, he approached me in the library while I was studying with Kai and handed me a necklace. I looked at it, then passed it back to him and turned to talk to Kai. Seriously? You're turning me down for this nerd? Kai's smart, gallant, and sophisticated. Unlike you, all you are is a troublemaker. Are you looking down on me? Oh, finally. I was wondering how much longer would it take for you to figure that out. Not to mention, you've not helped once with the English lit essay. You're in my group, but you probably just think the Grapes of Wrath is a rock band or something. So, if I can finish that essay on my own, will you go on a date with me? Fine, but it has to score an A, else you can forget it. And my trick worked. Blake actually completed the essay on his own. He's smart, but he's neglectful of his studies, and it's made him make mistakes. On being handed back the essay, Blake's face fell he got a B. And even though he knew it was over, he still stayed in class to reread the teacher's comments. It seemed like this was the first time he actually put in the effort to do something. <laughs> What's wrong? Still in denial of your failure? Blake turned away without looking at me. The rich boy who lost the game for the first time looked so cute. So I put a gift with a message in it on Blake's desk. Needless to say, he was over the moon. In it was a set of clothes I'd bought for him, and an invitation to a bar at the weekend. Why, you wonder? Oh, you'll see. That Saturday night, Blake showed up in the outfit I had gifted him, and looked anything but pleased. <laughs> I can't come in wearing this. It's so old-fashioned. My friends will laugh at me. You invited your friends, too? To prove that you won the bet, right? If you get that thousand dollars... Will I have a share? You already knew it? I was just joking at first. But now... Let's go inside now. Don't worry. We won't be here for long. I dragged him inside. And immediately, his friends didn't miss the opportunity to tease me. Did the fish get hooked? Yes, I'm trapped. Quickly give him a grand. His family is bankrupt and in dire need of money. Huh? What? You're lying. Look, he's wearing donated clothes. Even his branded clothes have been liquidated. I winked at Blake, and he immediately reacted. Lend me some money. I need a place to stay, a sports car, and pocket money too. At this point, his friends turned nasty and told him he no longer qualified to be in their group. You didn't have to do that. I already knew they only hung out with me for the money. But that's what people are just like. <sighs> Why would he think that? He must have never been cared for and loved properly. Get rid of that face. This is a date, after all. Let me make it up to you. 
a bar that matches this outfit. So I dragged Blake to our evening party. I told everyone that I brought a friend to lend a hand, and the elderly immediately made him do all sorts of things. Mrs. Hastings asked him to climb the tree to hang the string lights. Mr. Derbyshire called him to chop wood for the campfire, and Mr. Shaw wanted him to taste his homebrewed beer. Then the next second, Blake's already sitting on the drum throne. Huh, <laughs> it's been a long time since we had a young volunteer. That boy seems fine, doesn't he? I saw the way he looked at you. He's not suitable for me. I shrugged in response to her and suddenly felt disappointed. Yes, I liked this different side to him, but we were still from different worlds. The next morning at school, I still saw Blake hanging out with his greedy friends. Looks like he hadn't learned his lesson. Frustrated that all my efforts were in vain, I swung open my locker. Hmm, what was this note? Meet me at the library at 6 p.m. when everyone has left. I have a surprise for you. B. I shouldn't be like this, right? Waiting for him at the library for hours until everyone left? Nervous and excited? But as soon as the last person left, the lights suddenly went out, and the library door slammed shut. What's happening? Could it be that the note wasn't from Blake? I screamed out of fear. That's right. I may excel at martial arts, but I hate the dark. With a shaking hand, I dialed the phone to call Blake, and then slumped down in fear and sobbed. At that moment, the sound of the door unlocking startled me. As soon as the door opened, I quickly ran to hug Blake. Are you okay? I can't believe Chloe did this. I told you not to get near them. Huh? This wasn't Blake's voice. Freya, are you okay? Oh my god, it was Kai who opened the door to save me. But I thought that... I quickly let go of him, then ran away in embarrassment. That's strange. When I was in danger, the first person I thought of was Blake. Could it be that I really liked him? At that moment, the phone rang. It was my dad. Mrs. Jones had suffered a heart attack and needed surgery immediately. But the surgery cost was so much. Where could we get that money? Ah, oh, yes. Blake's dad. So I called him. Hello, is this Mr. Morris? Blake stopped hanging out with his friends and did his homework. I really need the money now. Please, it's urgent. Are you bringing me out to trade with my dad? My God, it seems like Blake heard all the conversation. I, I, so I'm just your money-making tool? And all this time you've trained me as your pet? It's not like that. We'll talk later. There's no time for your selfish thoughts right now. I gotta go. I ran like crazy to the hospital. My parents were desperate and the money hadn't arrived yet. So I called Mr. Morris again. You said Blake had changed. If this is the case, then why did he just get fined for speeding and resisting police? Don't ever call me again. Don't worry, Freya. I'll sell the nursing homeland to take care of Mrs. Jones. Everyone's agreed to move to the government nursing home. We sold our house, and now we live with Mrs. Jones in a new town. She's so much better now, but I do miss the other elderly people. Also, I miss Blake. I still keep in touch with Kai, and he told me that Blake has gone to some military school like his dad wanted. Well, that's unexpected from him. You should talk to that guy. Not about what you did, but confess your feelings to him. That will save you from regrets later. Then she patted me on the shoulder to comfort me but I really don't have the courage to do it. I was feeling guilty. Mrs. Jones, you have a letter. Freya, look, it's the invitation to a nursing home concert. It's our concert, isn't it? Trembling, I took the invitation. What is this? I pushed Mrs. Jones's wheelchair to the door of the nursing home named Sunflower. When we walked in, we all burst into tears. Everyone was there. This is all Blake's doing. He's such a kind boy. He found us and built us a dream nursing home. 
You and Freya were the surprise gift we prepared for him, but as soon as he saw the two of you, he ran away. Hearing that, I rushed to the gate. A car passed me. My gut told me it was him. I ran after it and shouted in despair, Blake, wait! I like you! I really like you! But the car quickly went out of sight. I helplessly slumped down on the street, tears streaming down my face, and I still muttered, I really do like you. What are you saying? Say it louder. I turned around startled. It was Blake. He was in his military uniform and smiling at me fondly.